Well, the calendar has officially rolled to the month of December, and with it, we're getting plenty of cool air across the country here to start off the month. What is this pattern looking like as we get into the final month of 2024? Let's talk about it. Joining us now for our weekly weather conversation, Eric Snodgrass with Conduit. Eric, good to have you with us. Hope you had a great uh, Thanksgiving holiday weekend, and um, man, oh man, uh, <laughs> nice start to the uh, final month of the year with uh, cold temperatures across much of the country. Man, oh man, uh, so much for uh, you know December bringing in that uh, that cold weather. Man, oh man, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was most of November. If there was cold, it was out west. I mean, the South had its hottest you know November up until about the twenty seventh uh, on record. And then uh, here we go breaking that all down and flip the whole pattern around. And this is what happened. So way out off of Japan, the jet stream decided to extend just to reach about Hawaii. Uh, and then at that point, it just split. And if it splits, what that does is that takes all the flow into Canada, where they've got feet of snow across the Canadian prairie. That drives cold air that comes across eastern half of the country. And we finished the month with really a really cold signal. And it was interesting. We got snow in the northern plains, snow through parts of the Midwest. I mean, in and around the St. Louis area through southern Illinois, getting over into parts of Kentucky, Tennessee. They had some snow over the weekend. Really uh, you know, really slick conditions down there. And then the lake effects. snow. I mean, I'm, I'm sure everybody saw tons mm -hmm. of information about this on the news. You know, I know the Weather Channel probably covered it nonstop because it was big. I mean, four feet of lake effect snow. They shut down parts of I-90 there near Lake Erie. The Buffalo Bills game last night was just, I mean, everybody probably had a blast watching that. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, so it was, uh, it's, it, and that's not, we're not done. Like that whole pattern is still here throughout much of this week. And in fact, I've got two more episodes just in the next seven days alone of, of pretty intense lake effect snow because those lakes are still very warm and the colder going over the top of them just sets up this heat transfer into lower atmosphere, which billows up these convective clouds. They're not deep, but they're loaded with water. And if you're in one of those lake effect snow belts, you're going to get it. I'm going to Syracuse later this week for a big farm bureau meeting for New York. I, I can't wait. I've never, I've experienced lake effect snow in Illinois but never coming off of either Lake Erie or Lake Ontario. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be able to see some of that. But so, you know, we, we think about all of this, Jesse, and we just think about what it means because this is a dry pattern for most of the country. You know, I, there's big snows, but this is a pretty dry pattern. And I, I just want to say that when I looked back historically at the amount of drought we still have across the midsection of the country, uh, it ranks third only to a year ago and then 2012. Like that's where it is. I mean, so there's drought lingering despite this, you know, this pattern that's producing snow. And um, I'm concerned because you look at all of those years where we had fall drought that extended, you know, into December and um, we didn't do so well in the next year. What I mean by that is there tend to be more drought pressure across the midsection of the country. So we either need this winter to be really, really nasty and break it all, or we got to rely heavily on spring rains to get us, you know, in a good return of soil moisture. Now, there are places that were really wet in November. The Southern Plains were really wet. In fact, I had a phone call last night with a couple of guys in Oklahoma. They're like, you know, we don't need anything else until you get into about mid-January. We're fine. But uh, they're going to be looking for moisture coming, you know, the second half of this winter. And I'm, so I'm just, I'm concerned about what this all means while we're given this distraction of big time lake effect snow and cold air. I'm worried about what it means for next year. So yeah, that's that's the run of it uh, as we get to this point in this, you know, now the new start of meteorological winter. Well, and I, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I would agree with you. I think the drought concerns are going to be a big storyline to watch here. And with how quickly I would say we've switched over from we were having nice weather and uh, getting some fall field work done to now, all right, cold air some snow in areas you know soil temps going down ground freezing in some areas things of that nature like we've quickly kind of flipped the switch here in many areas haven't we eric yeah and and so that's a good question jesse because the best years if you're gonna if you're gonna make an attempt at recovering some drought in winter you've got to have a super active freeze thaw cycle okay mm -hmm. so that if there's something on the ground you can get it in and we're locked into this colder weather for another five days at least. Now, the plains will start to warm up. There will be a few big warm-ups in the plains, but by Thursday, they're going to get shut back down. Uh, in the longer term, I'm just watching more cold air rebuild into the Canadian prairie. And so that'll be there, ready to come out. 
And so I'm not looking at this winter at being a major drought recovery winter, even though like the Eastern Corn Belt looks wetter than average in every forecast for winter. I think you've got to be able to get that water deep into the soil and lock it in place in order to break drought. And I'm just concerned. And I got to go to Ohio tonight and talk to guys about this. I mean, it's, it's going to be something I'm going to say, look, unless, unless you get a really active freeze thaw cycle to let some of that moisture get in, you will be heavily relying on spring rains in order to break drought. And what do spring rains do? They slow hard, excuse me, they slow planting progress. So I don't think we are away from kind of some of the perils of what this very, very dry September and October did, even though November came through and broke the pattern. And you might say, well, can La Nina help? No, this one's not very strong. It's very weak. And it's got to do more than it's currently doing in order to break this thing down. Now, I say all of that and in the same breath to tell you, I think the middle of the month, we do shift around a bit. In fact, if you asked me mm -hmm. what kind of pattern we're on, it's not week on, week off. It's like 30 days of one thing, 30 days of another, 30 days of one thing, 30 days of another. And I'm curious as to what the week looks like going into Christmas. That one may be the turnaround again, such that we're hitting our major holidays with really adverse weather. Um, so uh, you can hear a little bit of, you know, I don't know if the word is angst or whatever my voice, but I'm just, I don't like the way this fall and early winter is setting up and it's got me concerned about next year. That's, that's the long and short of it. Well, how about South America? Any concerns you're having down there? I know their weather's been uh, relatively favorable for their growers. What's the latest in Brazil and Argentina entering December? I mean, all they had was a little bit of a late start, but I don't think any of them care. I mean, I, I they, they got it in when it was supposed to all be in. And then I just looked this morning at all the NDVI data, and it's all near average, above average. Some places record above average. Argentina even looks pretty good. And yeah, it's dry in the northeast parts of Brazil, but not the center west. And so you've got to get, you've got to get a strong signal to just really bite down on the monsoonal moisture in the center west before we have something to talk about. So maybe it's going to be a problem of uh, too wet in places. That could be the issue uh, going forward. But if you're looking for a bullish story out of South America, I mean, I've said this now for four weeks in a row to you. I don't know where it's coming from. And no major heat stress. I mean, maybe a little bit in the Northeast, but it, it's kind of like, you know, saying that you're worried about heat stress in Ohio while mm -hmm. Illinois, Indiana, uh, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, everybody else is hitting. So it just isn't it enough. It's not enough to make a make it worth it. It's terrible for the folks that are dealing with it. But the regions that are under stress in Brazil right now are, are pretty small. Well, as we think about that, what about elsewhere around the world? Anything big you're watching as we enter the new month? Yeah, really wet in Australia. Uh, that's interesting. I mean, we'd expect that if La Nina had a little more strength to it, but we've got some major rains coming into Australia, which is important to watch. Uh, I'll just say this. The big thing I'm keeping an eye on is something called a Rossby wave. I've never told you about these things, but in the atmosphere, you get the little short waves, little troughs that sneak through, and they're the ones that make all your big weather systems. When the waves get really long, we name them after the guy that discovered him. His name is Carl Gustav Rossby. And here's the thing. Short waves, the little guys, they move quick and they move from west to east. Long waves appear to retrograde, meaning they go back to the west. And we're in a long wave pattern right now. I think there's a system around December 9th, 10th, and 11th that could sneak out of the Rockies that could bring us some moisture. But until this long wave pattern breaks down, which I don't see it breaking down until we get past middle of the month, we're going to be stuck in the pattern we're currently in. And that's why I'm worried about this 30 days on, 30 days off, 30 days. On, it just seems to be where the atmosphere is settled right now. And I wish we had a more dominant signal from something like La Nina or I don't know, just something to push it around. Cause I get really kind of tired of saying the same forecast every day. <laughs> you know, I'm like, Oh, it's another day of Rossby waves, just long waves in the atmosphere controlling things. But um, I'll say this, we've proven to ourselves that we can access cold air and we could probably get ourselves into a situation where we have more access to it than not going forward. So this will not be a winter like last winter. All right. Fair enough. Well, I know, uh, give us a plug for the Ag Weather website as well. You got a yeah. lot of cool features. I, I noticed you've been moving some things around on there a little bit yeah. too. So give us a plug for the website real quick, Eric. Yeah, that's what's really fun. By, by the way, Conduit's running some deals again today. Go out and look at them. Conduit.ag. See if there's something out there you can take advantage of. They've got 0% uh, financing through 2025 on input loans. we got these things bundled together to give you free, free glyphosate, free glufosinate. I was, <laughs> those words in my head, sometimes I screw them up. 
But go to agweather.com as well, ag-debix.com. I am rapidly building the site out with my partner uh, in business here, Matt Reardon. Uh, we're working for Conduit, and there's going to be all new regional maps on there. I'm building out all the additional website, and we're about to throw out our new premium stuff, which just it will be behind a login. Uh, but do business with Conduit. You'll get access to all of our new reporting stuff. I'm pretty pumped about it. Um, just getting the green light to go fast after developing weather content has been a lot of fun. So 2025 is going to be a big year for us. Matt and I on this website, ag-wx.com. Go check it out. It'll be a lot of fun. Definitely. I would agree. Check it out. ag-wx.com. Eric Snodgrass with Conduit. Appreciate the time, my friend. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Yeah, see you, Jesse.